So next up on the bench, and it's a busy bench today, is the Acer One Netbook. A 10 inch tablet, Windows 10 tablet. There it is there, and there it is close up. Fairly thick and at 600 and, I think they measured it, measured it at 650 grams. It's not that light either. I'm just gonna dump it on the, uh, on the scales here. Well, that's uh, doing that. Have a look at the specs there. We've got a preliminary review up for you. I'm just going to put that up on screen. It hasn't been published yet, so there's some things that may change here, but I'm pretty 99% uh, sure that everything's fixed. The review is going to go up in the next 24 hours, I believe. We've got the same specs as the Acer Aspire Switch 10e that I tested last year, which is kind of strange. Why would Acer do this? There's the weight there, 657 grams on my scales. This is a very low cost two in one. It is 260 euros. So that's about 50 euros cheaper than the Switch 10e of last year. Take a, a quick look there. Let's just go into, uh, have a look at, around the device. You do get a USB port on the base there. There's no battery in here, no disc in there. Or one, although one feels that there's enough space in this. Have a look there to actually, and there's enough screws in that, to actually uh, be interesting enough for you to take the back off and have a look to see what's inside. The other reason for that is, if you look at the uh, pogo pins on that, you'll see that there's uh, more than just needed for, for power. So obviously, there could be hard disk versions or uh, even additional battery versions of this going out. Um, as I mentioned, 260 euros. Let's just go around the other side so you can see any more ports on that side. Nothing on that side. On the tablet bit, there you see headset, micro HDMI, micro SD, uh, micro USB, and a separate power charging. So you're not charging through micro USB. And then on the other side, there's nothing there. On the top, just a power and volume rocker. And that's it. So it is an IPS screen and it's 1200 by. 800. Oh, that's a problem too. You lean it back too far, it goes to tipping point, and then boom, it falls back. So it also makes me think that maybe um, they've designed it to take a hard drive or a battery in the bottom, gives it extra weight. You can always take the back off, by the way, stuff a bit of plasticine in there to keep it weighed down. You'll add a few hundred grams to it though. Back to that screen, 1200 by 800 IPS screen, 10 point touch, no stylus, um, reasonable brightnesses. Let me just take you through to the uh, brightness test results we've got already in our review and you'll see there a reasonable 341 nits. Now that's quite nice. Two, uh, 1,218 to 1 is the contrast to getting a reasonably bright and contrast, contrasty screen. Don't expect too much on the colors. 9.53 deltas on the colors. 10.74 on the grayscales as well. So it's not an accurate screen. Something three and below would be accurate, um, but that is definitely towards the, um, yes, a little bit wishy-washy in terms of colors, although it does cover a reasonable range of sRGB uh, color range. So uh, it doesn't look too bad to the eye, and uh, if I just uh, bring up the start menu so you can uh, get an idea of some of the colors there. Let's have a more accurate camera. This is a more accurate camera I've got for you there. You'll see, maybe that uh, red doesn't look too red there. Anyway, um, I just want to quickly flick back to these specifications because we've got classic sort of 2000, even back to 2014 specifications. There they are, the Intel Atom Z3735F with a 32-bit version of Windows, 2 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigs of EMMC flash storage in there, which is not going to be too fast either. Um, weighs 1.195 kilos when it's uh, together and there's a few of the other specs including a 31, 31 watt hour battery inside which actually isn't too bad for that uh, size of device. In fact we just tested this Lenovo, this 15 inch Lenovo and that has exactly the same amount of battery inside so this is going to be interesting to see how much uh, we got in terms of battery life out of our tests. Um, let me quickly go through to some CPU performance tests just to give you an idea. This is not going to be that fast. Um, I'm just going to give you some Cinebench. Oh, that's 3D Mark. Sorry. Going back 
sorry, we don't have the CPU tests in our full review yet because it's basically the same as the previous model, uh, the Switch 10e. Um, there's some 3D Mark scores for you. 14774 on an ice storm standard score, and you'll see where it comes in. Similar devices. The Transformer Book T100 HA, HA which is um, a little bit more expensive, coming in with a cherry trail at uh, quite a bit more in terms of per performance there. The performance is 26% faster than the Acer 110 here. Now, as I said, we've got preliminary uh, scores, sorry, preliminary results in our test. Some of those might change, but uh, they look okay to me. And it really, it's really not that important actually because this is a low-end device. This is an entry level device, almost a gift, almost something that you use for the back seat of the car, almost something that's a tablet first, and you get a bonus cover with it that just happens to have a keyboard in it. The keyboard actually isn't that bad, to be honest. The uh, click point, it's a little bit, got a little bit of a clicky feeling to it. Let me just uh, bring the camera in on that so you can see. A little bit of a clicky, hollow feeling to it. And uh, the mouse pad, the touch pad there, well, certainly the left click there is a bit heavy. Not enjoying that at all, but uh, probably be able to get some blogs done on this while you're, while you're on your holidays. And at 250 euros, 260 euros, obviously not too expensive if you lose it. You get a year's Office 365 in here as well. I just want to show you the speakers on the bottom there, actually. They give a decent, uh, a decent performance in terms of uh, volume and uh, quality. There's the underside again. So, uh, just going back to the performance, we need to look at the Crystal Disc Mask scores. Crystal Disc Mask scores. Have we got those? Have we got those? Have we got those? We sh haven't got those. Yes, we have. There's Crystal Disc Mark 3 scores. Classic EMMC scores, 164.8 on the sequential read. Let's go down to a 4K right figure. And 117.1 sounds high. That's a 512, I'm sorry. Read 4K, 18.75. And the right 4K, well, that's not too bad. That right 4K speed, 23.99, is really not bad. So as an EMC go, EMMC storage goes, that's not too bad. So it's going to help actually with things like uh, Defender running in the background, antivirus scans, indexing. Those 4K read and write speeds really help to, to speed those background operations up. Battery life. Now let's see what we got in our test. I'm expecting reasonable battery life figures on this. Let's just go to that. Our Wi-Fi, we've got the German uh, results here. Wi-Fi surfing at 150 nits using Edge browser, 7 hours and 39 minutes. That's pretty good. And I would expect video playback, although it's only a 1280 by 800 screen, at the same sort of resolution to be a very similar time to that. So for 250 euros, you've got uh, enough here to, to keep you going on a flight for 7 or 8 hours, no problem. That's will certainly keep you occupied. You'll certainly be able to play uh, Windows Store games with this as well. So. Um, Think about that. Certainly, uh, Wordament should be fun. That's not a demanding application. But uh, in my experience, I've seen things like uh, Drift Mania and uh, similar sort of applications that are fairly 3D intensive working pretty well on this platform. Let me give you the overall scores in the breakdown. We gave it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for a netbook style 2 in 1. And there's the breakdown there. The keyboard only got 65.8%. The casing got 84%. And I agree with that. The casing is actually slightly, well, actually a lot nicer than the Switch 10 casing, the Switch 10E of last year. Display 76%. Uh, the pointer 87.8%. My feeling on the click of that touch pad there, it's not that fantastic. Temperature 91%. And uh, that overall average there, 80%. So if you're looking for a, a low-cost two-in-one, something for around the home, perhaps, something for the car, something that's going to get you Windows capability with a keyboard, and look at that keyboard as maybe something that actually protects the screen as well. So if you're taking it around with you, 
you've got a little bit of protection. It's a fairly thick device. 1.1 uh, kilo is not too bad, but certainly not the lightest weight for a 10 inch device. And I really would like to take those 10 screws off the back to see what's inside. I'm pretty sure you'll find at least some uh, two and a half inch uh, bay in there. Whether it's cabled on this version, I'm not sure. But I'd love to see whether that is cable so 80 percent on that uh, we have pros and cons from our reviewer here they're in german let me transfer translate those for you good optics so a good look to the device and good uh, input devices as well mainly focused on the keyboard um, and a, oh, a good brightness and a good contrast on the display as well I totally agree with that it's a reasonable contrast the, um, we measure PWM at about 10% uh, display brightness. I will add in that the color accuracy is not great. Um, we also know that that platform, that Z37 or Z3000 series, the old Bay Trail T is a little bit older now, and Atom X5 and X7 are in there to replace that with a much better graphics module in there as well. So if graphics or Windows Store gaming is important to you, then maybe think about a later version of a 2-in-1 for the best performance. The last points there, no USB 3, so that was a USB 2 port, no NFC and no AC Wi-Fi on that as well. That is the Acer 1 model number of that. What was the model number of that? I don't know the exact model number of that. I'm just trying to pull that up for you. There it is. The S1002-17HU, tested in Germany, 260 euro so could be a bit of a bargain if you're looking for that sort of thing but bear in mind some limitations there certainly on the performance good battery life and a reasonable keyboard thank you for watching if this helped you with your choice over the acer one two in one don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you want to subscribe to the videos you're going to get notification of more videos coming up soon we've got some high-end devices here an acer republic of gaming device that got a test and I think as an Acer Aspire V15 Nitro Edition Black. So that will be coming up soon as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next Notebook Check Tech Review.